there's nothing wrong with this amplifier. This is a say, show and tell. Uh, one of my clients, a uh, fellow that had the big tube amp there a couple weeks ago, he has one of these. He's got a lot of amplifiers. And he was telling me that this is the best sounding amplifier that he owns. And it's Class D. Now, I tend to agree that Class D amplifiers are excellent. And some people don't agree with me on that. And that's okay. Everybody's got their opinions. You know what they say about opinions and a-holes. Everybody has one. But I have to be on this. I have to agree that the, the 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 Class D amplifiers today sound amazing. In fact, you shouldn't hear a Class D amplifier operating. So the fellow that owns this, he said he brought it over. He loaned it to me. He said, "Here, I'm going to loan you my amp. You can hook it up to your speakers and see for yourself." And I'm going to do that. But he said before, you know, just open it up and show your your viewers what it looks like inside so that's what we're going to do i'm going to pull this apart there's nothing wrong with this i'm not going to do anything to it but i'm going to show you guys the inside of this thing and then i'm going to take it in and i'm going to hook it up to my speakers and i'm going to give it a good listen unfortunately i won't be able to share that with you because copyright but i am going to plug this in to various speakers that i've got and i'm going to give it a listen and see how good it sounds but let's take a look at the build of this unit first in case you guys are wondering how much power does this unit put out? I think he said it's like 250 per channel into 8 ohms and 450 or so into 4 ohms and you can drive down to a 2 ohm load. So this thing's got lots of power. How much does it weigh, you wonder, right? Because everyone thinks that amplifiers are heavy, right? Well, to give you an idea how much this thing weighs, I can pick it up with two fingers. Okay, this thing's less than 10 pounds. Maybe 10 pounds. On the back of it, I say it's just a straight power amplifier. Nothing really interesting to see. You've got the balanced input, and you've got speaker outputs and banana plugs. With, of course, the high voltage warning because, well, an amplifier like this can put out an extreme amount of voltage on it. Um, doesn't really say anything, just VTV amplifier, AC input, 120 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. Do not open. But open it, we will, because that's what we do. We want to see what's inside this unit. And there's going to be modules inside it. And it's going to surprise you how small these modules are. Because when you're dealing with Class D amplifiers, they are exceptionally efficient. They convert almost 100% of the incoming power to music. And they do it digitally. Now, the, I'm going to get comments now saying it's not a digital amplifier. Well, it is in that respect, if you understand how how um, Class D amplifiers work. Now, this should have a top that lifts off here. I'm not quite sure how it comes apart. But I'm sure that the top cover will lift off or the unit you know, will slide out there. Top cover is going to lift off somehow on this unit gonna see how it comes apart some allen keys here to hold the front on there the front comes off I just, I just have to loosen them and then the front will lift off and there'll be more screws I'm sure in the front that hold the front the top cover on that's how it comes apart so let's just see okay here's the amplifier itself Are we impressed yet? The board on the front, this is the power supply board. So our AC comes in through the black and white wires, rectified, and it'll of course auto switch. We've got our power indicator on the front here, and I notice it's got a three position switch. I don't know exactly what that three position switch accomplishes, but this is our power supply. So this is generating all the voltage that's going to go to the amplifier modules that are at the back. And these are the amplifier boards. So you've got your right channel here, and you've got your left channel here, and this is the, the power into it. And I don't even think this thing does anything. This, this other strap doesn't even appear to go anywhere. Oh, just two wires, three wires, that's it. If we look down here, this whole big flat ribbon cable here, or flat wire, only uses three lines going down to this plug 
This is the power plug that plugs into the board itself. And these are the digital amplifiers right here, both of them. Two separate modules, one for the right channel, one for the left channel. Pop out the module. Oh, those screws aren't even tight. I would have thought that those screws would have been tighter than that, but maybe they've worked their way loose over the years. But that screw certainly wasn't tight. Let's just pop out these four screws that hold the module in place. We'll unplug the module and take a look at it. So this module should unplug, which it does. So this is the, the power module itself. And I'll get a close-up of this. There's a couple transistors underneath here. This is the actual amplifier. There's there's so little to these. This, this what I'm holding in my hand here, is capable of pumping out, I think, around 400 watts. It's something ridiculous. I have to look the specs up on this thing, but it's 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 two, two, 200 watts minimum into like 8 ohms. And that's why I say when that little board I showed you guys a couple of years ago, I've still got it. I, I'm going to end up putting it in a cabinet somewhere. And, you know, get a power supply for it and actually finish that project at some point. But I've got that little module, the stereo module, and it's, it's, it's a board that's not much bigger than this. It's basically two of these in one board, right? And everyone's criticized, say, oh, there's no way that that thing can put out power. Yes, it can. These things are um, unbelievable, the power output that these modules will put out. It's just ridiculous. Right? This one's a 2019 Purify. So this is not, not an old unit. It's a, it's a relatively new unit itself. Now, the transistors themselves are connected and heat sunk down to the the main board. So I'm not going to pull the, the back heat sink off, but I'll try to get a, a, a picture. The transistors are right here. You can see the, 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 the screws that hold it down, the bolts. I'll try and get a close-up so you guys can see inside the module here. So here's the transistors, the switching transistors on the bottom. There's just two of them, right? And uh, the the uh, capacitors, and then the the, the low pass filter is down here. What the low pass filter does, this is what this is what uh, filters out the high frequency switch, which is what these are. They're basically a, like a switching power supply. Is how these operate. They're very, very compact and very, very efficient. And they don't need much for a heat sink because you're not wasting power, unlike with analog equipment. This this transformer here would be part of the of the output, I'm sure. And the the driver chip is right here. This is what drives everything. put the module back in and we're going to fire this unit up. So the module just plugs in. And another beauty of one of these is if you manage to blow a module up, you just buy a new module and you plug it in and you're good to go. This is just the interface, this one, right, for the power supply to get power from the power supply into the module, get the audio in from the audio input on the back, and then the audio out that goes to the speakers. You can see right here, if we look down here, these two great big copper traces here, these are the audio out. So after it's filtered and the filtering is done in here, in these stages, I would, I would imagine if I put my scope in here, we could probe some of these caps here and we'd see the, uh, we'd, we'd see the class D square wave waveform, which I've done before. I've shown you guys how Class D operates. It's really, it's not rocket science. It's how these things work. Powered up. Got the unit powered up. Let's uh, take a listen.
different circuits but our, our switching voltage appears to be 130 volts rail to rail that's where they can get the big the big uh, wattage because this is going to have low and high voltage supplies low voltage supplies for the low voltage circuits and high voltage supplies for the two uh, transistors that are switching back and forth This sounds incredible. Even with these, I'm just using little crappy little speakers from a mini system. This thing sounds incredible. I can't wait to get this in the house and plug it into my big speakers because this thing is amazing. I guess those are insulated, but we should see if I look between ground, I should see uh, a switching on one of these caps here. They should have a, a switching signal on them. see the audio I'm not seeing any of the switching signal it's been removed already
if this was my amp, right? If this was not just on loan, I'd be, I'd have my scope probe hooked up to the output so I, I could show you guys the waveform. It's a square wave. It's a, it's a pulse width modulated square wave, and the, the the duty cycle shifts with the music. So if there's no music, it's just a straight square wave. I've shown you guys other Class D amplifiers on all of those modules that I've re reviewed in the past and how the signal looks. So if you want to see what the signal looks like, go look at one of those ones because it's going to be exactly the same. I wonder what this little switch does here. Does it change the color? Oh, it just, oh, I get it. That little switch on the front here. It's just the blue light, right? Blue light on, blue light dim, and blue light out. That's all that is. My speaker, he just fell out. I just got the wires kind of shoved in the back. Um, so I've, I've shown how what the Class D amplifier waveform looks like. It's just a square wave signal and the duty cycle shifts. And um, I don't want to say, I don't want to do any probing around on this because it's not mine and this is an expensive amplifier. I don't want to have to buy it. So, but I am going to take it in and listen to it on my good speakers because I tell you, even listening to this, it's just, I'm amazed. On these crappy little speakers that I'm using and they are junk I'll show you the speakers you'll just laugh so that's the garbage speakers I'm using and even with these JVC dual duck plastic face wooden speakers these were from a mini system they sound like well they're not great speakers but they sure sound good on this system anyway um, that's about all I can show on this is the unit itself very impressed I'll be more impressed I'm sure when I hook it up to my uh, B&W's or my Technics SB7000's which I just recently saw a pair of them for sale for $1,400 would I say that that's overpriced? well I paid nothing for mine but they are nice speakers I will admit that that they they do sound very good anyway I um, hope you guys enjoyed the look into this Class D amplifier by VTV, the Purify by VTV. I'm now going to have to look at getting myself one like this because I think this would give my Crest VS900 a good run for its money. It is just. It's transparent. The guy that owns this, he's got some magna pans, and he says this thing drives his magna pans to the moon and back. And I can believe it with the power this thing's got. But that's the beauty of Class D. And I know the audio files are going to come out there with, and they're going to they're going to say that I don't know what I'm talking about and call me an idiot. And um, but unfortunately, they're hanging on to the past with their old, big old Class A B inefficient amplifiers that are full of distortion. You guys know who you are. You guys that are hanging on to the old Sansui receivers thinking that they're the greatest thing since sliced bread and, and a matter of fact, they're actually a pile of crap. It's like this thing here that I've got. I use as my, my test amp. I see people asking outrageous amounts of money for units like this, and it's actually really not a very good amplifier at all. I've never blown speakers before, but I blew my tweeter with this thing without even cranking it up. It's just because of the distortion. Um, I hit 40 watts or so, or 45 watts, and I pop my tweeter. You know, wonderful, great. That's that's the problem with 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 uh, low-powered class A B or class B. Well, class A B. That's the problem with them is that they clip. They have no they have no reserve, and you hit that maximum power, and they clip. And when they clip, the harmonics that they create just cooks your tweeters like that. And that's why you need kind of you need the power of these units. Because when you got this kind of power and reserve, you're never going to clip. You're never going to blow your speakers. And, you know, no, you're never going to drive these things to, you know, the, the full power. But it's sure nice to have that headroom available. And that's the first thing I noticed with my my Crest. And the guy that owns this also owns those, those uh, BGW, the two big BGWs that I've worked on. Um, but that's what I noticed with the Crest is it's got so much headroom that I never have to drive it anywhere near its output. 
to shake the walls and I don't have to worry about clipping because I couldn't drive that thing to full power if I wanted. I'd, I'd have the windows breaking or blow the fuses in the speakers. But the thing is it's got headroom and that's what this has got. This has got lots of headroom and with all that headroom that this has got, it's clean. And that's the real beauty of Class D is they, they're, they're so low in distortion. They've got this technology perfected. It's been perfected for years. A little module like this putting out the kind of power that it puts out with virtually immeasurable distortion. And to the, to the purists out there that see it's creating a square wave, well, it's creating a square wave as a switching signal, but that is canceled out. That's completely removed. It's not part of the audio signal. It's so far up in spectrum that subharmonics from it would still be well beyond the hearing range and well beyond the range of any uh, tweeters or any type of, of, of uh, audio reproduction equipment. It just is not going to happen. Most of the new ones are running up around a megahertz or so in frequency and there's no speakers that are going to produce frequencies up to a megahertz. Even subharmonics is still going to be so far removed from the audio spectrum that it's not even worth mentioning. The, 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 the um, distortion on these is, is below the measurable limits. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.